Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. And we are live tonight. This is March the 30th, 2012. I have to give the date so they will know it is a live show and not pulled from the archives. But here we are at the end of March. I don't know where the whole year has gone already. <laughs> but I have a really, really special guest tonight that I know you're going to really like to, to to hear her story. And if we have callers, I would like you to direct some of your questions to her. But she's a fantastic lady, and we are old, old friends. We go back over 20 years. But the call, the guest tonight is Doreen Virtue. And I don't think there's anybody in the metaphysical world that doesn't know who Doreen is. <laughs> but let me give out the toll-free number. Uh, Don has already told us that there's many callers waiting to go online, but I'll give out the toll-free number just in case. The toll-free number is 1-888-627-6008, 888-627-6008. And we're talking to Doreen. She's in Hawaii, sunny Hawaii. Okay, Doreen, you there? I'm here, Dolores. It's wonderful to be with you. I was telling them, we are we go back a long way, a long time in lifetimes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, <laughs> also. <laughs> but you know, we've been friends a long time, and mm-hmm. I really, really respect your work. And I think everybody out there who's in the metaphysical world, no, we always call you the angel lady. That's what I've been called for a long time, and I want to just say that you're. I always say that you're my favorite living author. Um, your your work, I believe, is just a, f- a breath of fresh air, and I always recommend your books to people. So it's an oh, honor to I be with pre- you tonight. I appreciate that because I respect you so highly. Thank you. But what we're going to do tonight, I always start out by letting the guests tell how you began. Because, you know, a lot of people don't know. All they know is that you're an established author. You've got, I don't know how many hundreds of books out there. Even more than I can count. <laughs> I stopped counting you've books got your, since your angel cards, mm-hmm. and you've got so many things out there. You've been doing this a long time, yeah. and they see you as established. But we all know, you know, you have to begin somewhere. That's right. And I I was really lucky. I I chose very open-minded spiritual parents for this lifetime. I think it's the only re- way that my guides got me to agree to come back here after the way they treated me in previous lifetimes, you know. So uh-huh. I, I have really, really great parents. And I was a born a clairvoyant child, like a lot of children, and I could see angels and dead people and energy and it was extremely sensitive. And And having these parents really helped me to keep my sensitivity open. And yet there were things they didn't understand that I was going through. I was being shown the future. I was being shown my life purpose. I was seeing dead people everywhere that I didn't recognize. And my parents just didn't know what to do with that. So I didn't even understand what was happening to me until much later in life. And I just grew up feeling like something was wrong with me. I knew that other people, other kids weren't seeing what I was seeing. Because I would talk about, look at this man over here when I was out with friends. And they'd say, what man? And I would talk about manifesting because my parents raised me metaphysically with manifesting and nobody understood that word when I was growing up. So I felt very different than everyone else, very sensitive, very alone, and um, mostly unhappy as a child. But um, to, So to do this work openly now, it still feels odd. I don't know about you, but it's just, is this allowed to talk about all this? and. And just to have this be my career, my life path to teach about these things that I grew up with is a miracle to me. And I, what I what I love teaching about is that we all have angels with us at all times because this is something that I've been seeing since I was a child. And if people knew how protected they were and how loved and how guided they were, they would never be afraid or anxious any, again. They just would know that they're absolutely cradled in this unconditional pure love that is always with them. And these angels and guides want to help us to have this happy, happy life if we'll just listen to them. And so that's what my teaching is about, is helping um, my students and readers to listen and mostly to trust, 
the messages they get. Yeah, this is what I'm always telling my clients and everyone is you're never, ever alone. You come in with a guide or an angel assigned to you, and they have to be with you your whole life. Because a lot of my clients feel like there's nobody, and they are there. They're there to help you, and they are yelling and screaming at you to get your (laughs) attention. (laughs) They sure are. And they want the best for us. A lot of times people do hear their angels subliminally um, and through their intuition, but they resist making the changes that the angels are guiding them to make because just their fears and insecurities, like they might get a, a message to quit their job and to become a healer, and they don't trust that message. And so not only are they losing out on being a healer and the joy of that, but their potential clients are losing out. So it's really important that we listen to our angels, not only for our own sake, but for all the people that we get to help once we listen to the angels. But I think you were very lucky that you did choose parents that that, uh, weren't trying to uh, discourage this. Because, you know, so many people, they start like that as children and the parents say, no, no, you can't talk like that. People think you're crazy. And they squish them. They exactly. Developing what they really is very natural talent. Yeah, no, I was really fortunate. Um, my mom is a is a third generation healer. And so she, growing up, my parents used manifestation techniques and healing on things like our dishwasher, our uh, car, on anything that my brother and I would get, you know, normal childhood aches and bumps and and illnesses, and we would never go to doctors or call repair people. We would use prayer and affirmation and visualization for everything. So that's just how I've always lived. And and it was nice going to school because my mom would... um, got me out of taking any kind of health or science classes because she didn't want me to learn about diseases because she said if you learn about them, then you'll incorporate them in your thinking and manifest them. So I got to take oh. lots of art classes going, growing up. That was really cool. Mm. So that that's really neat that she did encourage you like that. Oh, yeah, she still that does. Way you, I, it was very natural for you. You didn't question it then. No, it's all I've ever known. You know, I, I grew up in this real loving, you know, I never heard any arguing until I went out of the house. I mean, our, my parents are the gentlest people I've ever met. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I'd, but I think everyone, no matter what kind of childhood or parents they have, um, can benefit from connecting to the angels for healing our past. I mean, I had a gentle family, but it was harsh childhood because I got teased all the time. And and I didn't feel like people understood me, and I, I just didn't feel like I fit in for most of my life. So yeah. I, you know, I had to work with the angels to heal that part of my childhood. You, you mean when you were in school, they were the one that teased you? Yeah, the, the kids in the neighborhood would tease me. Or the kids at school, you know, pretty much made me feel like I was some sort of freak or oddball, mm-hmm. um, just for the well, way I talked. And yeah, and I went through that, all of that too. And I know a lot of the other psychics that I know that are genuine, a lot of them had the same problem because they had this ability since childhood. Yeah. And, you know, the school didn't understand. The kids don't understand. Kids can be very cruel to each other. Oh, it's horrible. I love that there's right now there's um, a big movement of no bullying and anti-bullying movement because I don't know about you, but I really suffered at the hands of bullies growing up and just... I'm I'm glad I didn't shut down over it. I know some highly sensitive people do shut down. Yeah, I but, had the same way. I was teased and uh, felt like uh, I didn't belong in school all the way up through high school was mm-hmm. a problem. Same so, here. you know, that's the thing. You have to uh, to not let it get to you, but it's, it's so hard. One thing I did learn, though, was that uh, how to treat people. Yeah. And I I raised my kids to not hurt any anybody else mm-hmm. when they were growing up, not to hurt any other child, because I knew what it felt like, and I was, didn't want them to make other kids go through that. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it does, it gives you compassion to be on the other end of that. And I, when I've looked at all my past lives, I've been on the kind of the receiving end of racial prejudice in so many lifetimes. And I think the racial prejudice I got this lifetime was being highly sensitive and psychic. And so it it brought up all the emotions of kind of um, persecution lifetimes that I've had. And, And then I had to also take responsibility for it because 
feeling like a victim or blaming others, as you know, is a way to stay in the karmic cycle. Yeah. And, uh, and so I really, really don't want to have any more uh, mandatory karma after this life. So I've worked really hard to take complete responsibility for everything and do deep, deep forgiveness with everyone, all the way from God on down to every person in every lifetime, and especially forgiving myself. And it's made me feel really free. So, you know, God willing, when I go back up to home, to the afterlife plane, I won't have to come back here next time. It'll be a choice. Yeah, that's what they, what I feel, too. But, yeah, you have to, to learn to forgive, and that's what I've been teaching in my classes and my lectures, is you've got to let go because you carry that old karma around with you. I call it the baggage in the garbage. <laughs> yep. You carry it around, and it yeah. ends up making you sick. It makes you, you sick, and you keep junk. attracting it over and over again. All the junk. you got to get rid of all the junk. Amen. Because I have clients that come in that are always, they're in the victim mode. Yep. You know, poor me, look what everybody did to me and all of that. And uh, they won't get out of that. And they are sick. They've made themselves miserable because they're in the victim mode. Exactly. And you know, you do therapy too, you know, and Uh it's not easy to work with these people's problems. Right. And, it, you know, some people aren't ready to hear that they're 100% responsible for everything. But no. when when you get to that point, it really, it's it's not depressing. It's not frightening. It's very freeing. And, you know, it, to get to that point of taking responsibility for your life, it can feel ominous because then you think, oh, no, then I have all this pressure and responsibility for choosing my future. And the answer is that's true. You do. And isn't that beautiful that you can choose to have this to turn your life around, and the angels can help, especially in this new 2012 energy, we can turn our life around so quickly. Well, everything is speeded up. That's what I've been telling people. Time is speeded up. Everything is. It's moving very fast. It's so no, fast. Amazing. There's no time to hold on to all this junk anymore. You've got to let it go. You do, and if you don't, the universe will let it go for you. <laughs> I always tell them, if you don't pay attention, they are going to hit you up the side of the head. And you so don't true. want to wait till it gets to that point, but they will get your attention one way or the other. Yeah, it's amazing. And I thought you and I would be retired by now, but there's still apparently <laughs> lots of work for us to do because you and I are traveling tirelessly around the world. And it's so funny for, for everyone listening. Dolores and I have been girlfriends, you know, she said at least 20 years, and we keep trying to get together, but we're always assigned to different parts of the planet. And usually <laughs> I'll be going right where you... Sometimes left. we're ships that pass in the night in these places. <laughs> yeah, like you were in Hawaii. I live in Hawaii, but I was uh, I was in Los Angeles where you had just been. And this kind of uh, thing happens all the time. We were in England. I think I was in England. You were in Ireland. And we yeah. were just still so close, but we couldn't get together. <laughs> well, I figure it's like, like uh, waitresses at a restaurant, and God assigns us different tables to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it, it is a lot of times it is ships that pass in the night, but we're all doing our work. But I don't even know what the word retirement means. Well, yeah, you're a poster child for hard work. I mean, you, your travel schedule makes me look like I'm sitting still, so I really applaud you and admire you for that. <laughs> no, what you've been telling me you've been doing this year alone, you're out there uh, the same way. You're traveling everywhere and you're know, talking to a lot of people. It's exciting. I mean, I do like to travel, and I've finally learned how to maneuver through airports and and the whole travel physical part of it so that it works uh, much mm-hmm. better. And, you know, it's so exciting to meet people from different cultures and to just experience this beautiful small planet we live on. I'm really excited this year. I'm going to some new places for me, such as Norway, and I get to lecture in Paris, which is such an amazing place to go, and, and uh-huh. you know, Australia, all over London and, and, and um, Canada, and just wonderful places to go. And then I'll be in Japan in July, so it's That's so exciting. You did mention Japan, but have you done all those things this year alone, or was that last year too? I don't remember. <laughs> it's a blur. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I tell people. Uh, but sometimes I get up to give a lecture and I'll say, where am I? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I don't even know what country I'm in. 
until they start I, asking questions and you hear the <laughs> accent. Or something, I'll say, oh, yeah, you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> right. I always joke that I, I can speak four or five different types of English, too, because the different English-speaking countries have different words, yes. different vernaculars. So, so I've learned how to speak all these different forms of English, too, traveling around the world. But one thing I've learned from traveling is that people everywhere want the same thing. They want to be at, at peace. They want to be happy. They want to be loved. And it you know it's there are, there is no division in countries when you go to the essential level of the human heart that's what i tell everybody at my lectures if more people traveled we wouldn't have the violence we wouldn't have the wars because we can see we're all alike we're all looking for the same thing the people they don't want wars they don't want no. the violence they just want to have a family and try to help you know have a good job to take care of the family they don't want all these other things that the governments want. They're they're it's just true. they're all good people. It's true, and you know I I know that you've been getting this message too. Is a part of each workshop that that I do. We we spend time doing peace prayers, and and the angels really gave me a clear message two years ago that you know we all have free will, but that our free will. We can't impose on someone else, and they can't either. But what we can do, they said, to the degree that someone else's free will choices affect your free will choice, they will intervene if we'll ask. They, we have to ask. But they said, it's just like if someone was trying to smoke a cigarette in your house and you have a non-smoking house. They, that person has a free will right to smoke, but, not, but you have the free will right to have your house be smoke-free. So you can ask them to leave. So they said the wars is someone else's free will choice that's affecting all of our free will choice for peace. So the angel said, if enough of us ask, please intervene into this, this overlap part of their free will and my free will. We don't want war. We, we want peace. That the yeah. angels can therefore intervene into these very few number of humans on this planet that are profiting by war and profiting by um, artificially increase, in cre creating recessions and and oil shortages and, and keeping us on the fossil fuels instead of solar like we should be. Um, yeah. There's just very few people who are imposing their free will choices on all the rest of us. And, and so if we would all um, just ask the angels to intervene into those people's free will to the degree it's affecting you, they said we could topple it in the direction of peace and having um, eco-friendly energy supplies. Uh-huh. Because that's what I've been saying for 20 years. You know, I've always mm -hmm. tell the audience, that's what Nostradamus said when I was doing those lectures, we don't know the power of your own mind, that all you have to do is focus on something and you can create it. Right. So they said, if, if you could do that with one person's mind, imagine the power of group mind. So yeah. they told me to tell any group that was meeting together, you know, metaphysical group, prayer groups, meditation groups, take even five minutes out of their their group meeting to focus on peace and harmony, and we could create it because the power of the mind, its group mind, is not only multiplied, it's squared, and the power is tremendous. How and beautiful. a lot of people said they started doing that, focusing just five minutes in their meetings. We That's can do it if enough people understand their power. That's right. It's really important not to complain or, like you and I were talking about, not to go into victimhood and say, oh, they're ruining the environment or they're creating these wars, but to just really take responsibility and say, no, enough. I demand a peaceful life. I, I demand a peaceful planet. I demand a, an eco-friendly planet. And really just put our foot down and speak up. It's not like the old lifetimes where they would burn us at the stake for speaking up. In this lifetime, they give you radio shows and publishing contracts for speaking up, you know? Yeah, and this radio so, show, I can say anything I want. No Yay! No <laughs> <laughs> Hooray for 2012. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a caller. Uh, do you want to go ahead and talk and to him? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take calls. That sounds great. Okay, because there are some more things I do want to talk to you about. Okay, there's a caller there. Uh, is somebody there? Yes, hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Who's there? Hi. This What's is your Stephanie name? Collins. What? My name is Stephanie. Okay. Stephanie. It's hi. hard to hear you, sweetheart. Can you speak up just a little louder? 
Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Yeah, have... um, Dorian, I love you. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just wanted to know, actually, if my guides or angels had any messages for me at all. Um, well, the first thing I'm seeing, Stephanie, is the sign of detoxification, and they're showing me just scrubbing you down on the outside and the inside. Um, the message seems to be about environmental toxins much more than dietary toxins. So it feels like you have been around someone who's smoking or around some sort of fumes or air pollution. Does that make sense? Uh, no. Uh, I don't What think about so. your work environment? Do you work around anything like that? Uh, not at all, actually. They're, they're showing me the sign of pollution or some sort of toxins on your body. On my body? Mm-hmm. Like you're um, breathing I mean, it? You're absorbing that. Oh, my God. Could it be a toxic relationship? Um, this actually is a physical message. If you want me to see about your relationship, I'll check in. But they show me the oh, sign yes. of... It, it actually looks more like in your house. There may be something like asbestos or mold Ooh, that you may not even kidding. be aware of. What's that? I said you're kidding, really. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, it's, wow. It's really, your sign. Are you having any sort of itching or any kind of allergic reactions? Um, I've had a headache all day, but I can't figure out why. Yeah, I feel like, and have you been at your house all day? In and out. Yeah, it feels like, and you know, this has nothing to do with our housekeeping. This, this can be, you know, a function of just dampness. There can be hidden mold in houses. And I mean, I really trust the angels when they show me these signs. It's always right on. And yeah, a lot it's of something there is unaw- mold, dead mold they're not even aware of. Exactly. And it does nothing to their housekeeping. They keep showing me up up on the ceiling um, in corners, um, high in the ceiling. And, okay. just, and I'm hearing airborne particles. And so what I'm getting is I'm seeing an air purifier. It's very, very helpful. And then if you're able to... Um, just to get someone in there. There's experts now who can get in and, and take care of, of mold spores. Um, you can actually okay. call environmental cleaners to your house, and they can help with it. Um, we actually, oh, sorry. Oh. We, we, we actually had, um, I mean, we're selling our house. Uh, okay. We sold it, actually. It's sold, and we're moving out uh, next month into a new house. So Good. we're leaving this house behind. But actually, the inspectors came in and looked over the house and said there was nothing wrong. So um, we, I personally thought there was mold and they were going to find something, but they said there wasn't, so I was very curious about that. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so but, see, you're, you're listening to your angel, Stephanie. You got the message there's mold. There is. And so it feels like it's behind the um, surface, in between the... Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I think I know exactly where it is, actually. Okay. So you got the message already, and I'm just here to corroborate that that's what it is. And your headaches are also, it's your, your, our bodies are 100% intelligent, and they know exactly what's going on. So when we get pain like a headache, instead of taking an aspirin, it's really important to uh, interview the body and say, what message are you trying to give me? And it, your body, through the headache, is trying to give you the message it doesn't like the mold. And your intuition already knew this, so I would just um, go to the health food store and look if there's any kind of herbs you can take that could counter that, not kill the pain, but just counter any effects. I'd get outside as much as possible, and I would definitely, for that month you're living there, go by an air purifier and maybe a dehumidifier. Okay, okay, we'll do. Wow, that is totally not what I thought they were going to say. <laughs> what you never know what the me, angels but... are going to say. They, they see everything. <laughs> wow, nope. amazing! Uh, is there is, is there anything else before I go? Like, uh, it, I, I'm concerned about that now, though. I'm like, oh my god, am I sick? Like, is this serious? I don't Should see. I go see a doctor, no, I don't or? see that. Um, I can always see the you know serious illness. I do not see that in your body. I'm not a medical doctor, okay. but I'm a medical intuitive. I can see energy, okay. and I don't see the sign of anything serious. I get that that you you're highly sensitive, and you do need to detoxify. Okay. So I would, uh, if I were you, I'd be going to a health food store. I'd get a detox kit, 
and then um, but they keep showing me. So I'm going to tell you this: they keep showing me bleach can can kill the the mold. Bleach. Mm-hmm. Although I wouldn't want to breathe that, but they keep showing it to me, so I have an obligation to share that with you. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But I you're only there for another month, and you're going to be fine. Um, I think oh, the call okay. mostly is to give you co- uh, confidence when you get a feeling like that. Even when so-called experts tell you otherwise, always trust your feeling. Okay. Okay, thank you, Doreen. I actually thought they were going to say something about, because the last time I asked somebody about my guides, they said um, that I should be using my intuitive abilities more, like and this is what I'm verging on to um, mm-hmm. to help people um, by using my intuitive, but I'm scared to do it. I don't, can't trust myself enough, but I do trust myself. But I, in order, I trust myself to listen to myself. But in order to help other people, I have to trust myself to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this and, is a perfect example. I mean, and look at you. You got through on the radio show. You know, I mean, you're you're doing successful things. You got the message about the mold. I mean, you're you're right on. So practice Mm -hmm. like that helps to build confidence. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just learn to trust messages. Learn to trust what you're getting. Your body is talking to you. Exactly, exactly. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Doreen. And uh, thank you. Lots of love. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for calling in. Okay. But, you know, this is what I deal with all the time in my clients is that <laughs> uh, you make yourself sick, but they people say they don't want to believe that. Mm-hmm. Yep. But there's the always body a reason. doesn't get sick accidentally. There's another caller. We have to find out why did you do this? Why did you bring it on? Okay. Right. Okay, there's another caller. Hello. Is somebody there? Hello. Hello. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Rachel. Hi, okay. Rachel. Hi. Yeah, have a, um, speak I, up real nice and loud for us, please. Okay. Uh, is that better? Yeah, thank you. Okay. I, I just want to say I'm very honored to be talking to both of you tonight. I've, um, I recommend both of you <laughs> to people as often as I possibly can, especially um, and, and using the angel cards and that sort of thing. Um, I, I guess my question tonight is, is um, I've got a nine-year-old niece who's extremely talented and sensitive and she's had some pretty icky stuff hit her and we've helped her work through it but she's regressed as far as behavior um she's more my sister has said that she she could trust her more as a seven-year-old than she can now um she's really having trouble in her schoolwork and i i really could use some guidance on what we can do to help her so what's that her she, first number name, one please. doesn't want sonora how do you spell it? S O N O R R A. Sonora. Okay. And do you call her a different name? Do you call her for short something else? Well, my 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 auntie name for her is Bug Doodle. Okay. Okay. I call her so, Bug. um as as I tune into Sonora, I get um extreme food allergies to to wheat. Extreme okay. extremely extremely sensitive to wheat. Um they also show me the sign of and I mean this with great respect, but it's a, it's a specific sign I get occasionally. She's got a little bit of the drama queen going in her, um, where yeah. she's, she brings <laughs> attention to herself and enjoys it. And whether it's yeah. um, so-called negative or positive attention, she's she's got quite a bit of drama um, in her. Um, and so the first, first thing I would do, um, and I'm not a, a nutritionist, but I do have a background in this eating disorder therapist combined with my psychic ability. I would really highly recommend a gluten-free diet for Sonora. And okay. these and days that's so easy. There's alternatives. You can have any kind of food you want practically and get it gluten-free. Gluten is never a good idea for anyone in, in my experience. It, it, it usually means going wheat-free and going more toward your rice and sometimes corn. Okay products and and, um, and actually that sort of thing does run in our family we've got another cousin who's about that age who's got the gluten she's got the full-on celiacs going on oh mm-hmm. wow okay that is the extreme form of gluten intolerance yeah so so to have pasta. that so a lot of people don't think about pasta but that also falls exactly. in with that category exactly right. and pasta was exactly what i saw her eating 
Uh-huh. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, not, I'll, not only I'll bread and cereal, it is uh, pastas too. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and then the other thing with with her being very dramatic is there's ways of channeling that in positive ways, such as at that age there there are um, uh, children's um, you know the, theatrical groups. She can get into any kind of theatrical um, or drama mm-hmm. classes. Um, really emphasizing giving her attention when she's quote good rather than mm-hmm. just saving up the attention for when she acts out, is really important okay. with this particular girl. Okay, is okay. there any um, other children in the family, or is she the only child? No, she's the oldest. She's got a brother who's about a year and a half younger, well, <laughs> about a year younger than her, and then there's a, a younger sister. And the two girls are very tuned into what goes on beyond the veil. Okay, but that makes sense, then. There would be a bid for attention when there's more than one child. Mm-hmm. Right, and the youngest you know, is really. You may not realize it. You may not realize it, but maybe you are giving the other ones more attention than you're giving her, and she's she's acting out because of that. That that could be. Um, I don't get to see them very often. They're out in North Dakota, and I'm in in New you're, Mexico. You're the cool aunt. I am. I strive to be <laughs> that auntie. <laughs> yeah, and and every. Um, Crystal Child that I've met has a, at least one cool aunt, so that's part of the the reason that they agree to to even be incarnated. And so it's a very important yeah. sacred role that you're playing, and it's not about quantity of time with them, but quality. But as a cool aunt, you can send her uh, books or cards, you know, that mm-hmm. would help her uh, to to ground. At Valentine's Day, I did send her a deck of your uh, Archangel Michael cards. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Uh, and then I have a deck for kids also called... also giving her attention, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I, I just, you know, I, I just really kind of wanted to figure it out because there was what we believed to be an entity that had followed her across several lifetimes and was really kind of being horrible to her. And by calling in Michael and asking yep. Michael to help remove this, um, we believe we've helped. However, she was, the doctors decided and the school decided she needed to be on 40 milligrams of Prozac a day. Oh, boy. And my sister's like, no, 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 we're done with this. And so she's now off the meds and we've got her doing some yoga and mm. we've got her doing some art stuff, art therapy, because she's fixated on rainbows. Oh, um, well, of course. That's good. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a very um, special person, as you know. And when you're mm-hmm. someone who's that evolved, it's it's tough being in a child's body because you're ready to go mm-hmm. and do your purpose as an adult, and and it requires all the patience. And I'm glad you've got her going into art because that's the way she can express herself and at a deep nonverbal level. You might okay, also right. experiment with music with her, also. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, her her youngest sister is also very talented that way, but she's had control over it since she was an infant. I mean, when she was three months old, she was speaking to me telepathically. She actually asked me, I know who you are, do you? Mm-hmm. Well, there's, and, this is a new generation of children are. They are special children. Yeah. And they're not like the generations before them. No. Yeah. yeah. This, I, I, it's a beautiful I'm, relationship you have with her. And it's just going to grow and get even more special through time. Okay. Um, aside from my my job with my nieces and nephews, is there are there any other messages that my guides need me to know right now? Um, the the message for you is also dietary. They really want you to add more greens to your diet than you've been, <laughs> and you've been getting that message too. Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not they, deny they mean it. it. They, they, I, I know they want you to give a message, you know, about career or about love life. And a lot of times people get frustrated when the angels say, "No, we want you to change your diet." But what they—that's the way that they're going to get you the career and the love life and everything else you want. Is is right? Is, the, the diet is the the fuel for the engine that helps you to manifest all of your dreams. They they've been very clear on what's waiting for me if I would just shape up. So yeah. I, I I know what's possible. I just needed the kick in the uh-huh. pants from you for the veggies. Yeah, well, it's real. These messages <laughs> are real. If you would just eat one more salad a day, <laughs> those dreams will come to you much quicker. 
Okay. I I, I, I will do that. I <laughs> I can't deny it. <laughs> the the archangel is uh, Metatron, who is very good for motivating you to act in healthy ways for your body, and uh-huh. and Raphael, the healing angel. So Metatron and Raphael can help you to okay. want to eat more salads. Okay. I, I will I will enlist their aid in, in pulling myself out of somewhat of the carnivore rut. Beautiful. Um, now it's up to let yourself. Your part in the, to play in the whole thing, too. Yes. Yeah. I just have to say I've enjoyed your books so much, and, and I'm just thrilled that I got the chance to talk to you. Um, I can't wait to find a a seminar where I get to actually participate with either one of you, actually. But, again, thank you for the season. Thank you. Okay. And thanks for calling. Absolutely. And on that note, Doreen and I are really trying to get a a uh, one-day, what I'm going to call it a seminar or what, a one-day lecture, what what workshop, I guess that would be a good way to put it. Well, wow, that's going to be a powerful day, too, and so really we'll let everyone trying, know through our website. Yeah, we're really trying to make that materialize this year <laughs> in 2012. Yeah, we're looking at the end of November in, in Hawaii, so if you could just kind of, everyone could save that time of year to come for your Hawaiian vacation with Dolores and myself. Yeah, it would be after Thanksgiving. Right. It'll be on my way back from, i got to go to, to Turkey, to Istanbul, and to China again. It'll be on the way wow. back. It's a way to break the trip up. So Doreen thought this would be a wonderful thing to do, just have a one-day workshop. Mm-hmm. So if you watch our website, you're going to hear more about this. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. But um, I, I know you just got back from a cruise, too. Yeah, I I did the Hay House Angel Healing Retreat in the Caribbean and yeah. and then was in San Jose last week speaking and then in a week and a half I'll be going to Atlanta to speak at the Hay House I Can Do It event. Uh-huh. Teaching um online courses through Hay House Radio and just 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 the right amount of busyness this year so far. It's going to it's going to speed up, but for right now it's been very balanced and and happy. Well, mine, there's another color, but we're already, I'm going back to Europe uh, at the end of July, and I'll be there till the end of the year. Then I come home and go to uh, Asia. But we're even getting more countries wanting me to come. So I said, I'm just a person, you know, I can't keep, I don't, there's only so many days in a year. I I totally relate. I get the same thing. I just, hopping from country to country gets exhausting. I do the best I can and hope people will come to see me wherever I speak, and the same uh-huh. with coming to see you. Because, you know, we, we feel you have to do this, and I know that's why they keep me healthy, because we have all this yeah. work. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another caller on there. Uh, uh, who's there? What's your name? Hi, my name is Suzanne. Okay. And um, I've been to Doreen's... Um, workshops and read several of your books and I'm I'm so embarrassed to say this but I don't know if I'm blocked or what I or if it's my ego but there's part of me that doesn't believe it it's kind of like blind faith and mm-hmm. but I can be a very intuitive and, and psychic person at the same time and self suffer from low self esteem so Sure. Well, you know, if you could, the old conscious mind is the one that's always saying, "Don't you don't believe it?" You know, that's that other part of us, the conscious mind. Uh, go ahead, Doreen. Are you yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I actually respect skepticism. I don't think that we should accept all of these things we hear unless they resonate with us. I know you're the same way, Dolores. That you and I both, we're not trying to talk anyone into anything. It's just. We offer up the truths that we know, and if they resonate, that's great. And if they don't, it, hopefully we spark that curiosity where you can research it for you yourself. You plant a seed anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but so you don't out, have to believe in angels. To anybody, they all have their free will. We just drop little seeds and crumbs, and maybe they'll benefit from it. Exactly. 
Yeah, I, I, I know you're the same way. You're not trying to convert or convince anybody of anything. Yeah. I'm sure not. Um, but um, so when I look at you, you the, the angels say, well, we've kept you alive. Um, it looks like they, there was some sort of experience where you did have a brush with death and the angels helped. And they're not giving me any details about it, but that's all they're saying is, you're alive, aren't you? And so that's proof that that the angels have helped you. Do you know what that means? Because I can ask more details, but I want to see if you understand that message. Mm. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't have a clue. And believe me, I I really want to contact and ask them to help me. Sometimes I do, sometimes mm-hmm. I don't. And I, I, I want it to be um, more a, a natural part of myself, yeah. but I feel like there's a block or something, you know? Okay, well, you know, the, the first thing I, w- I want to say, this is the first hit I got when listening to you, is that the bigger someone's life purpose is, the louder the ego is. And the ego doesn't want us to hear the angels because then we'll, we will be happy and at peace. And the ego's whole miss it mission is to keep fear in the world because that's how it, that's its, its food and its life force. So that's a, the, I call the conscious mind. That's, that's what you're calling the ego. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, uh-huh. right, exactly. And so the fact that your conscious mind or your ego is being this loud is a clue that you have a very big life purpose. And so congratulations on that. Um, they do show me when I tune into you, that you've got a natural healing ability. Um, You've dabbled in the healing arts or you've worked in the healing arts or taken some classes in the healing arts. Um, And this has been in the back of your mind, but there's been a part of you that's not wanted to to follow through on this. You also are extremely creative, I think more than you've even given yourself credit for. And you, you need a big, healthy dose of creativity in your life. That would get the flow going a lot more of um, feeling the happiness and the peace. Because it's really not even about believing in the angels. It's about being happy. That's the bottom line. The angels don't even care if you believe in them. All they care about is are you happy or not. And so when I tune into you, I get that you you need to be um, have some arts and crafts in your life, some mm-hmm. sort of creative outlet. Does that make sense? Yes, and, and I was just wondering... I. Um, is the healing in my hands or is it just the presence of me? Sometimes I feel like I can just talk to someone and I'm shifting their energy as I'm talking to them. Um, I would agree with you. You definitely have healing hands because healing energy, when I look at people and do a reading, it's green and your hands are bright green. And Mm -hmm. so you have that ability and you've dabbled in this, as they said. And it looks like you've taken some healing classes or read about healing. And mm-hmm. so the healing can also come through talk therapy, like you've been doing, and channeling messages for them. A lot of why you don't have the bells and the whistles with angels, like I always say, call it bells and whistles because I see these visions or I hear these voices, you're more claircognizant, which means that you're getting messages from your angels as thoughts or ideas that are downloaded and these thoughts don't really make a big entry. They just are there. And mm-hmm. so things might seem obvious. They're so much they're a not. part of me, do you mean? Yeah. Yep, they're a part mm-hmm. of you. But, and, you. And if you've noticed something that's so obvious to you, other people are clueless about. Have you noticed that? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's because they're not getting that clear cognizant message that you are. Okay. So I don't even really have to reach out of myself to the angels. It's just I, I'm more connected than I even realize. Well, clear, yes, exactly. The clear cognizant is the highest vibrational way that you can get messages because it comes from the crown chakra at the top of your head. And it's, it's kind of like I always call it God downloading information. You know uh-huh. without knowing how you know. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Cool. I am. I just can't wait to get off the phone to tell everyone about these two fantastic women that I spoke to this evening. It's such an honor, and your mm-hmm. beautiful role models to show people what we what we can really do. And for That's the so listeners sweet. who allowed me the time to speak with you, well, God it, bless you. Thank uh, you for that. It's very nice. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, and thank you.
Okay. I know thanks. Don said there was four callers, so I don't. If we have another one, I want to get them in before we get too late uh-huh. into the show. Uh, but we can just keep on talking and until we hear the beep. Anyway, there it is. Was he said there was <laughs> last week? They had to cut them off because we were getting too late. Okay, uh, who, what? Who's there? What's your name? Hi, my name is Kelly. Kelly, hi. Hi. Um, good afternoon to both of you ladies. Um, I, I actually didn't even think that I was going to get through, and I would asked my angels, I said, if I've got something to say, then, you know, let me get through and click. <laughs> okay. It happened. Beautiful. But, um, Doreen, I was introduced to your books about 15 years ago, and forgive me if I get a little emotional, but... Um, It was during a a really struggle time in my life, as it is, you know, again. I felt just like Suzanne was saying that she's blocked. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I, I believe in my angels. I talk to my angels every day. I met a really wonderful woman by the name of Michelle Denman in Sedona. And that's Mm -hmm. where I was introduced to your books. And she had, um, told me, um, that after reading a lot of your books, that my son was an indigo child. And, and what's your son's first name, please? Ryan. Ryan, R-Y-A-N? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he's 24. Okay. He's not such a child anymore, but always mine. Right. But my dad recently passed away. It'll be a year next month. Right. Sorry. And I feel first like name? I'm... I'm sorry? What's your dad's first name? Bo. Bo? Or Barton. Uh-huh. Barton or Bo. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, ever since then, um, I've just felt, you know, I've, I've been trying to get back into all of my spirituality. I left it for so long because of all of the unhappiness around me and, you know, the, the difficult things happening with the kids and my marriage and, and things. And... Um, I'm trying to to really focus myself now. Okay. And it just doesn't seem like I'm getting there. Um, I understand, Kelly, and what you're saying a lot of people can relate to. They show me the sign that you've been financially insecure or focused or worried about money. Does that make sense? Yes. And that being so focused on, you know, where will the money come from has has um, detoured you a little bit from where you want to be. Okay? In a way, it's more my husband who's so afraid of that. I understand. So his energy is either bleeding off onto you, his fears about money, Mm -hmm. and then you're going to need to shield if that's the case, or you're blaming him somehow for you being focused on money. Either way is toxic for you. And it right. needs just to be taken care of. So I'm pointing this out as, as respectfully okay. as I can, because Completely you're the understand. you're the my client right now and our client by calling. And so what can we do for you? Is um, without sounding like some sort of religious person, I keep hearing the Sermon on the Mount, the book in Matthew that you know, just seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all this will be added unto you. First, you put your focus on spirituality, and then you. The, you know, everything follows that you need. And you've kind of put the, maybe through your husband's lead, you know, if you've put your mm-hmm. focus on first seek money and then spirituality follows. And that's just backwards. And, and it happens. I see that in quite a few people. I'm sure you do too, Dolores. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's more of um, trying to... Uh, because, you know, such hard times, right, you know, now. And well, I mean, him. saying that's only going to manifest that. I okay, really okay. work with people to, to to be careful about what you say about the economy because there's people who are yeah. having stellar years financially right now who are in ethical and beautiful professions. So right. what they're doing is they keep saying economy is great, I have plen- plenty of money, I'm manifesting. See, Doreen, that's what's happening to my company. It's growing by leaps and bounds. So people yep. keep talking about the economy, and I said, what economy? It just depends on what your focus is, what you're going to create. Exactly. Right, so and I completely never, I never say these hard times. If you say hard times, that's what you're going to manifest. Yeah, the fear right, and comes I, in I, and you, you manifest what you focus on. 
Yes, and, and I very much agree with you. And, and I, will, I will be the first one to say that I've been um, in, in like a, a whirlpool of negativity. And um, I, I want to pull myself out so desperately of that, mm-hmm. um, especially since my father passed away with, you know, dealing with family, you know, very negative family members. And I know that it, it, it comes back to me as well. And, you know, where I just want to sit here and focus with my family right? and figure out my life, my life's work. You know, that would be my ultimate dream is just let's well, figure out my life's work. Well, you can do that if you, you, you just mm-hmm. can't give away your power, honey. So it, it's okay. not about your dad or your husband or anyone. That's giving away power. We need you to be, a, a, you know, doing your healing work, your your light work now, and it means really taking charge of your thoughts and your feelings and your words, like a laser beam of putting them on seeing yourself and see your husband is happy and see your dad in heaven is happy. And you can right. lift the whole family up through your decision and and heal this situation. If you wait for them to, to um, give you permission to go forward, you're going to be waiting the whole lifetime. Yeah, I agree. Because this is how powerful you are. You can you create the circumstances in your life. You create your reality. So make it a reality that you been, want. Yeah, it's all kind of been put on my shoulders. And See, I'm again, that tired. sounds victim-y, though. And you're not a victim. You're a powerful woman. No, no, no. I, I'm not a victim. I, I, I won't be a victim anymore. Absolutely. Good. Don't, I, I don't buy be. into that because you're not a victim. Nuh-uh. Nope. I, I refuse no one can put anything anymore. on you. The economy is great if you just will affirm that. Okay. And really, when we allow ourselves to manifest um, a lot of money, it gives us more money to donate to charities that need it and mm-hmm. help our loved ones. So let yourself be abundant. Let yourself be happy, I, sweetheart. You're so beautiful. I, I think yeah, it's a law of the universe. Once you ma- you start manifesting, it has to happen. You know, and I know this, and that's why I think I needed to hear it from you ladies. Yay. <laughs> okay. To reinforce it again. But, well, that's um, what we'll be doing I, at I our workshop. Know, let, uh, yeah, I, we know I'll what we're going to do with our workshop, I think. <laughs> you, okay, you'll come we'll in fly. with poverty and <laughs> victim mentality. You're going to leave empowered. Yeah. <laughs> okay, gonna, well, I'm thank you for calling. Life. We're going to have to a few more questions and. Not from callers because we're coming up to the to when we have to sign off. But thanks for calling in. Okay, but we only have a few more minutes, Doreen. Yeah, though. that went fast. The whole hour has gone so fast. Woo, really fast. I just want yeah. you to tell people what you're doing now. Are you working on another book or anything? Yes, I am. I, I have. I've been writing a lot, and so I have a brand new couple of new things coming out. I'm really excited about a brand new book about Mother Mary that took oh. me a long time to write called Mary, Queen of Angels. And it's about people who've had Mary visions and Mary sightings and Mary healings. So Mary, Queen of Angels will be coming out any minute now. I've got a brand new deck of tarot cards, or something sometimes called tarot in Europe. And yeah. I, just, I wanted a deck of cards, Dolores, that was gentle, that was same as tarot traditionally with the 78 cards. And the well, your ink cards are your angel cards are gentle. Well, those are gentle, but those are not tarot. Those are oracle cards. So I have my first deck of traditional tarot cards, but there's no there's no um, negative words or scary symbols or anything uh-huh. like that. It's 100 percent gentle tarot cards called the angel tarot cards, and they're they they're pre-selling on on Amazon, and they've been selling. Even with before they're out, they've been the number three selling, um, and number two selling tarot deck on Amazon. So the, okay. I'm really excited about that. They're coming out any day now, and uh-huh. um, just uh, my romance angel cards just came out, which are really powerful. My new decks kind of go into the shadows a little bit more without any kind of fear. So the romance angel cards are really, really honest and truthful about relationships and. And I just have so much fun creating cards. That's my life purpose, is to create cards. And I know well, it. You know, uh, that's what I say. And we talk about retirement. I wouldn't know what to do sitting around <laughs> twiddling my thumbs. I'd be bored out of my skull. I don't twiddle very good, and I don't think you do either. <laughs> no, no. But I just want to spend the, the last remaining time just recommending to um, those who are my 
listeners and readers to really, I highly recommend Dolores' books and workshops. This is a woman who's got her finger on the pulse, and Dolores is spreading real love and light. So please be sure to buy a Dolores Cannon book and go to one of, at least one of her workshops. Okay. And before we sign off, Doreen, I've got to tell them about you. You're getting married, Daddy. I am. Sure. I am. Uh-huh. I'm getting married. Um, we haven't we haven't publicly announced the date yet, but um, this amazing man that I met in 2009, we reconnected on Facebook. And ah. so I'm telling I'm telling my single friends forget Match.com. Look at your Facebook friend list. But um, <laughs> we, we had met in 2009. But when we re-met, um, it was love at first sight. And we had ah. both lost someone very dear to us last year. And so we kind of met through comforting each other in grief. And it just went from there. And he channels angels like I do. And he's an absolute angel man working with Archangel Michael. And I'm just happier than I've ever been. And everyone says I look younger, and I know I feel younger and happier. So it it can happen. You think it's going to be in December anyway, somewhere about the end of the year. Well, we haven't publicly announced it, but there's a real good chance. (laughs) Okay, but you know, that's what I told you. Your angels would Mm -hmm. lead you to the right person. Yeah, everything's moving really fast. And and I love this new pace of life because I think going slow is kind of the old energy. Okay, he's telling us we're going to have to go off. Uh, t- give, just give him your website before we go sure. so they can know how to, to contact you. Sure, my complete schedule and everything is on DoreenVirtue.com or AngelTherapy.com. They both go to the same place. And then on Facebook, I'm the Doreen Virtue official fan page where we have an angel party going on right now. We'd love to have everyone join us. <laughs> okay. All right, so the hour has flown by. So but, fast. Doreen, I can't thank you enough. It's been a real honor and a pleasure to have you on tonight. Thank you, Dolores. I love you so much, and thank you to all your listeners. Lots of love and light to everyone. And thanks, everyone, for for tuning in tonight and for listening. Good night, everybody. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos, and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.